What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you're having a great day because today we're going to talk about how we could handle user data. Because of you guys have reached something very special that I never ever dreamed about reaching in one year. This channel got over 5k subscribers in 2020 and I can't thank every single person enough. Therefore, I want to do a simple $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. There's not a lot that you need to do. I recently created an Instagram account which I have linked in the description down below. And this is not a sponsored giveaway by Amazon or YouTube. I just want to give something back to the people that supported me over the last year. The only thing you need to do is to follow me on Instagram, write down why you think that you should win the giveaway on my latest post. And if you have any idea of a giveaway item that I could do in the future, just write it down as well. I don't need any personal data or whatsoever and the giveaway will end on the 8th of February. Alright, let's dive into the actual content of this video. This is a topic that I want to show you just by showing you some examples. Later on, when we're going to create a complete application, you'll be seeing how we could use these examples in the best way possible. What we've done so far was pretty simple. We just did some requests to the database. But if we take a look at our migrations, let me open it. Let's go to any migration, it really doesn't matter. We have integers, string, timestamps, foreign keys. Websites that use a framework such as Laravel aren't often used to show static content. Usually, these websites deal with complex and mixed data sources. Think about user input from forms, URL paths, queries, posting data, and way more. We have created a small application, as you can see right there, where we pretty much do every little performance. We create it, we print it out, we update it, we delete it. Now Laravel provides a collection of tools for gathering, validating, normalizing, and filtering user data. And that's what I want to show you. If we take a look at our cars controller, so let's open it. Let me scroll up and let me zoom in. Ah, this is good. You can see that we have an index method to show the data. We have a create method which will show a form. And the method that I want to focus on right now is the store method that we have right here. Well, let me actually zoom in one more time. The reason why I want to use a store method is because of the request that we have right here inside our method. Up until this point, I really haven't talked about it. And I remember that I said that I will talk about it later on. And the moment is right there. Now the request instance that you see right here is a global helper. From this specific request instance, we can access loads of other methods or options. And each of these options exposes the entire Illuminate request object. Right here. There's way more available than only user data. But in this video, I want to focus on the methods that are specifically related to user data. So what we've done so far was specifying every single input field right here. And then we created a new car right here and we pushed it right into our database. We could make this a lot easier by basically saying request access operator all. So the all method. Just like the name suggests, the name all, this method gives you an array containing all of the input the user has provided. So basically what we're doing right here. Honestly, I don't really recommend using this way when you're creating a post request, but it's something I personally think that I have to show you. Now to show you the actual data, let's set it equal to a variable, let's say test, and let's go on the line below and let's say dd variable test. Now, in order to show the actual output, we need to add a new car because we want to store it. So the brand name is, let's say, Mercedes, founded in 1914. And the description is, this is my Mercedes. Let's click on submit. And you can see an array with four elements inside of it. The first one is our token, as you could see right here. And this token is basically the CSRF token inside our create form that's being passed through. We have the field name, found it, and the description, which is all right. So next to the all method, well, let me actually add a comment. Request all input fields. Now let's comment it out. So next to the all method, there's also an accept method. So let's say accept method. And this method will provide the same output as the all method, but you can choose one or more fields to exclude. Right now, 
as you could see in the browser, we're adding our underscore token. And that's not something that you usually want to submit or to show a user. So let's go back to our code editor. And once again, let's say variable test is equal to request. And let's call the accept method. So in here, we could pass in a name as a string. So let's say underscore token. So what we're basically saying is show me everything except the underscore token. Save it, refresh the browser, and you can see that name found it in description is being showed and the underscore token has been removed. And before I continue on to the next method, this could also be passed in as an array. So let's say that you want to exclude more than one value. So let's get rid of the content inside our method. Let's say brackets, single quotes, underscore token, second param, let's say name. Save it, go to the browser, refresh it, and we have excluded two fields. As you might have noticed in the previous videos, there's almost always an option to inverse something in Laravel. And that can also be done for the accept method. So to do that, we need to replace accept with only. So we're basically saying, show me only the underscore token and the name. Save it, go to the browser, refresh it. Token and name has been shown to us. And this could also be done as a string. Let's get rid of the brackets and only show me underscore token, refresh it, and the token has been showed. All right, sometimes you want to check user data to see if it's available to you. And that can be done with the has method. You might want to check if a specific user input field has been entered. So let's comment out this line of code that we have right here. So let's add a comment, has method. Let me scroll down, all right. So let's say variable test is equal to. Now, before we continue on, you need to remember that this will not filter through our database to find a row with the name of whatever. This will check if the current request, so the request that we're passing in right here, has a value that we're passing in inside the input field. So let's say the request has, now let's pass in, let's say found it. So we want to find the value or we want to see if our found it has been entered. Save it, refresh the browser, and true has been printed out because it has been entered. Now usually you don't use it like we're doing right here. What you usually want to do is to, well let's say if request has found it, then let's say dd found it has been found. Save it, go to Chrome, refresh the browser and found it has been found has been printed out on the screen. Next to everything we've done so far, it's also very easy to get the current path information. So let's comment out everything that we have. Let's create a new comment. Let's say current path. And this could actually be placed inside the DD and we want to DD the request path method. Save it, go to the browser, refresh it, and this will return the endpoint of our URI. So in our case, it's forward slash cars, as you could see right here. Now you might wonder why I'm showing this to you. Well, this is because it will allow us to verify the incoming request path. So what we could do is to get rid of our DD. We could basically create a new if statement. And in here, we could say request is cars. So if the request or the endpoint is forward slash cars, let's say dd, endpoint is cars. Let's save it, go to Chrome, refresh the browser. Now you could see that this is true because endpoint is cars has been printed out and it works fine. All right, let's hop to Visual Studio Code. Let's actually comment it out again. Let's say that we want to talk about the current method. Now, sometimes you want to double check the method request. Therefore, we could use the request method, which will return the HTTP verb for the request. Now, inside our method, we need to pass in the method request. So let's say post, 
And the best way to show this to you is to add a if statement again. So let's say if our request method is post, which is true because we're posting a new car, dd method is post method without a capital E. Refresh it and method is post has been printed out on the screen. You could also check whether it matches the specified verb. And in that case, we need to change method to is method. Save it, go to Chrome, refresh it, and the output remains the same. Let's go to Visual Studio Code, comment it out again. And let's say that we want to show the URL. Sometimes you want to retrieve the full URL with the query string. So if we say dd, and in here, request URL, save it, refresh the browser, the output will be the entire URL. So what we would have done in PHP was basically defining the URL root as a constant, but now you could do it with the request. And the last method that I want to show you is, let's comment it out actually, my bad, how to show the user's IP address. So show the IP. Now what we need to do is to create a DD. Inside our DD, request IP. So find me the IP. And this will retrieve a user's IP address, which is used to do the request to your application. Save it, go to Chrome, refresh it. And since we're running on our local host, we will get 127.0.0.1. But whenever you do a request on the server, you could save a user's IP address. All right, guys, this was it for this video where I've showed you a couple cool things you could do with the request method that Laravel provides for us. In the next video, I want to talk about something very cool and that's validation in Laravel. If you do like my videos and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.